Hey guys, how's it going? Today, I'm going to be featuring the Yamato. This time, I am using the Sigma build that I featured previously in my main video. The idea behind this build is basically to get the Sigma or grouping value as high as possible, since Sigma is the probability that the shells will land in the center of the dispersion ellipse, which basically means that your battleship's guns will be more consistent at landing where you want the shells to land. To start things off, an enemy Albemarle does get spotted charging into Alpha, and my first salvo at him, you can see the tight grouping, and he is just absolutely deleted from the game, and heading back to port less than a minute in. The enemy Siegfried takes a shot, but I'm still turning out so his shells land short. An enemy Ibuki is just sailing flat broadside, and he is going to be my next target. I take aim, and I just fire since he is sailing in a straight line, and with this Sigma build, I'm expecting great things. You can see all the shells grouped up fairly tightly, and that is a second devastating strike in two salvos, going two for two with my salvos and devastating strikes. A quick clip that is probably going to be a short. And definitely seeing the bonus of the Sigma build from Angelo Iccioni with the improved Sigma against cruisers. There were torpedoes that were spotted for quite a while, but I wasn't expecting them to reach. Since they did, I know that it is a gearing. Fortunately, I ate it on the torpedo belt, so it didn't do a whole lot of damage, and I am still fine with my HP. It took a salvo at the enemy Siegfried, unfortunately, he didn't do a whole lot since he was angled. And this next salvo, I'm hoping to remove him from the game. Unfortunately, most of the shells actually hit the island, and my rear turret only got two pens. This game is quickly snowballing into our favor, with three enemy ships down, and none of ours dying yet. The right flank of the enemy team, there was a battleship last spotted going all the way around, and we have this Friedrich de Grossa that is just starting to reverse, and unfortunately, when I first aimed in, I thought he was actually slowing down and going to start going forward, but he just stayed in full reverse and my shells missed entirely. The enemy Montana gets spotted passing the gap and it seems like he's just going to continue straight south and end up in our spawn. So as I push towards where I think the Montana will be, I am just going to keep taking pot shots at the enemy FDG that is reversing in their spawn. After messing around with this build on a bunch of ships, I can definitely say that this is going to be one of the strongest builds for a free-to-play player, especially since Angelo Iaccioni is a free commander since he is one of the national commanders for the Italian Navy. So thinking that you need to buy Sharnhorse the next time it's in the shop is entirely up to you. It is no longer something that you need in your battleship accuracy builds because now you can simply go with a Sigma build, making your battleships more consistent and more accurate at the same time. The only thing I think Sharnhorst is now going to be useful for is if you're going to be using a Brawler Commander for your German battleships instead of, say, Henry J. Hyde or Ciliax. But if you are going to use a Sigma build like I am in these games, the best commander to do it with would be Henry J. Hyde, since he is a hybrid and gets to have the best of both worlds, having a tank build, secondary build, and accuracy build all in one. Also, a Zerlane Charnhorse will probably just be more useful for those cruiser commanders that you're building for accuracy for ships like Stalingrad or Alaska. Some of those super heavy cruisers make Sharnhorst useful, whereas Angelo is pretty much not useful because it's only for battleships. The Montana comes around the corner, I pop my spotter plane. Unfortunately, that first salvo, I'm not able to get a citadel because he is decently angled. But as of right now, all I need to do is stay angled, and since I can overmatch his bow and his superstructure, I know I'm going to get major chunks out of his HP. So as he pushes in and I push towards him, all I have to do is aim for the bow, especially now that he is bow in, I am definitely going to get a whole lot of pen damage, 
as he just keeps charging in. He does start focusing his guns on a friendly teammate instead of me, which is leading me to believe that all he is going to try and do now is just try to ram while trying to kill off one of our other teammates. So I slow down and start to try and reverse away from him. The enemy team has only three ships left and one of them is this Montana and he is starting to turn broadside to try and get all of his guns off on me. So I start to push forward since I know that he is not actually going to ram and this last salvo does in fact kill him off with two enemy destroyers remaining and being last spotted on the other side of the map. The only thing we can really do is start pushing towards B to try and support our team, especially our destroyers, should they get any of those destroyers spotted. I'm just going to fast forward here since nothing really happens except for us starting to sell towards Bravo. Anyway, this build is definitely a very strong one, especially when using these dispersion commanders. This game in the Yamato seems pretty good, but actually the game before this, I was able to do 298,000 damage. Unfortunately, when I tried to record it, the game recording software ended up crashing and all it did was create a folder that usually the recordings will go in, but this time there was no recording in it and the game was lost. So I obviously had to try and get another game in the Yamato using this build. Fortunately, the game right after that one is this one, and I didn't really have to put a whole lot of effort into trying to get that content, especially thanks to those two cruisers in the very beginning, just giving me two dev strikes right off the bat. Now, as I start getting closer to Bravo, there were destroyers that were spotted fighting each other, and I know that where I am looking right now is where the enemy destroyers are. So what I want to try and do is push in between this small island at Bravo and use it essentially to protect myself from any torpedoes. I am just trying to get there as quickly as I can at full speed. And since I am still spotted, I know that the destroyers are somewhere out to the left of the island. If the destroyer had decided to go right and go into the cap, I would have been unspotted or the cap would have been getting contested. And like I predicted, the enemy destroyer does get spotted off to the left. And I use my spotter plane to just increase my sigma and get a very good salvo. And turns out there were actually two destroyers over there. And using this island, none of those torpedoes are actually going to hit me. I have four kills and my guns will reload in five seconds. Unfortunately, the last destroyer just gets absolutely smashed. And by the time I shoot, our whole team also shoots and kills him off before my shells get there. And I am unable to get a Kraken. In this game, I was able to do 187,000 damage and get nearly 3k base XP with 4 kills. Unfortunately, no Kraken. I am definitely having a ton of fun using this build. And since it's actually really effective, it's honestly making games much easier and more enjoyable to play. So Kyo Takagi, the Japanese dispersion battleship commander, basically the same build as I had on Sims. And I'm just going to go ahead and show you that last game that I was talking about here, 298,000 damage. And I was using the same exact build. And here you can see in this game, 3,300 base XP. Really unfortunate that the game capture had to crash and not record this game. Otherwise, I would have posted this one instead of the one that I did. But sometimes shit happens. But yeah, definitely use this build if you can. If you're on the fence about spending the commander resources on Angelo Iccioni, I definitely think it is worth it. But that's all I got for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Do leave a like and subscribe for more. Leave a comment down below for any ships you want to see in the future, but until next time, aloha.